Now, Steve, you had a chance to meet these guys before we came out here. Uh, what did you guys talk about? Well, um, we talked about what you know, YouTube was started back in 2005, 2006. And uh, I think when we first started YouTube, of all things, it was, um, it was a dating site. Uh, so for, a, for the first week that YouTube was around, we expected people to be uploading dating videos, right? Um, and after zero videos uploaded after a week, we decided to change it and just make it all videos, any videos, public videos, and any type of general videos you wanted to upload. Um, and, uh, and, and the idea there still was that people were, they were gonna be uploading videos just for their family or their friends to see. If a video received 15 video views, you would know exactly who those 15 people were. Uh, but only about a few months in, we started seeing this trend where people would start uploading videos uh, for the entire world to see. They wouldn't know who's going to be seeing those videos. And that's when YouTube really took off. Uh, there was a, um, I remember back in 2005, the, one of the first videos that received a million video views was um, a soccer player, Ronaldinho. Um, he was kicking the the soccer ball off a, off a goal post. And then, you know, it continued to trend. Uh, after the acquisition, by Google, they continue to help people from around the world by internationalizing the site, by localizing uh, the site to many different countries. And so I think this is probably the, the product of what we never thought YouTube could be, but what YouTube has become. People that are uploading videos from anywhere around the world, and then it's being consumed by and everywhere around the world as well. Like, is this the first time you've seen a channel that similar to, to the Korea grandma? Yes, so uh, right before this, um, I, I, I checked out her channel. I looked at her three most popular videos uh, and they've all received over five million, you know, millions of views with the top one over five million video views. Um, I mean, I, uh, my most popular video, it's, it has, 100,000 views, it's not bad, uh, but that was, <laughs> that was uploaded in 2005, so that's over a 13-year period that it's, I've gotten 100,000 views. It's been up there the entire time? Yeah, so it gets about... Okay. <laughs> okay. So it's one of the, uh, the, the first videos uploaded. The I have 100,000. <laughs> um, I don't know the number of views she gets every day, every week, um, but I get about, I think about 20 views a day on my videos. Uh, but no, I mean, I think that uh, it's, it's, it's amazing to be able to see how quickly uh, a single video that's uploaded and it's instantaneously visible from around the world. It could be uploaded anywhere from around the world and then all of a sudden, anybody with an internet connection, given that link, they could watch that video. Um, I think it's, it's difficult to think before 2005, it was impossible to do that. If you had a video that you had, you, you put onto your, your camera, it was impossible for anyone else in the world to see that video. And so I think that uh, with, with, with what YouTube has done, it's only made it possible for people that have, that have the creativity to be able to create videos, they've eliminated everything in the middle. So after you, you take your phone, you take your camera, you can shoot a video of yourself, upload it, and a minute later, anybody in the world can see it. So the question is to the panel, how do YouTubers distinguish themselves in this overload of content, as it says? I mean, I, I, uh, I think, it's, it's good and bad. I think that with YouTube, if you have talent, if you have the creativity, uh, if you have something unique, you can upload it, you can share it, and it's going to be the users, the viewers, that are going to decide whether or not this is going to be a popular video, right? Um, and before this, there were, there were always people that, that you needed, 
their guidance and help and, and advice and assistance to be able to get that video up. Um, now you can just upload a piece of content and it's going to be the quality of the, the content itself. So I think that's the, uh, the, the big change that, um, that, that YouTube has brought and has revolutionized how content is actually distributed and how good content is surfaced. We'll, we'll do a final question. We have about a minute and a half left. So just what do you think of some of the distinguishing characteristics between Korean YouTubers and YouTubers from the rest of the world or other countries? Um, I do think that in a lot of ways, and I think uh, when you talk about uh, music, when it comes to technology sites, apps out there, um, when it comes to entertainment, Korea seems to lead the pack and the rest of the world seems to, to follow suit. And I think YouTube is a good example of that, right? YouTube is a democratic platform. People can go on there and they can view whatever they want to view without knowing who the creator was, without knowing where it was created, what country it was from. Uh, and I think that it goes to show that the, the first billion viewed video was coming out of Korea the highest number of billion video views are coming out of Korea. And it's not just being consumed by people within Korea, it's reaching beyond the, the boundaries of the country. And so I think there are, a, there are a few other countries that can create this content that seems to be viewed from around the world. But Korea is definitely up there when it comes to being able to create content that's unique content that is viewed from uh, around the world. I don't know what the, uh, the secret sauce necessarily is, but, um, but it's, it's definitely something that we've seen for the last 15 years. The World Knowledge Forum.